This program is copyright Mark Armitage and the CRS. On this program you will see an exciting update on our ongoing study of dinosaur remains and evidence that dinosaur fossils and tissues are simply not very old at all. The majority of this work was completed at the Creation Research Society Van Andel Creation Research Center located near Prescott, Arizona. The Creation Research Society maintains a state-of-the-art microscopy laboratory at the research center featuring light microscopes, a scanning electron microscope, a transmission electron microscope, and sophisticated digital imaging systems. All of the images presented in this program were produced at our own laboratory using our own equipment. Laboratory tours, hands-on microscope workshops, and classes are routinely offered at the research center and at other locations. Please see our contact information at the end of this program for more details. The CRS gratefully acknowledges the generous donations to the CRS Research Endowment Fund. We could not do this high-quality work without your generous support. May God alone be glorified by the content of this program. Thank you. And I'm looking at something very exciting. I'm looking at dinosaur bone in my dissecting microscope. This is bone that I have put through what's called a decalcification process. And I'm actually seeing the soft tissues left over after the bone mineral has been decalcified or taken away. This is very exciting, of course, because dinosaurs are supposed to have lived and died some 65 million years ago. And yet we still find soft tissues in their bones. This actually happens to be a triceratops horn that uh, we dug out of the Hell's Creek formation in Montana. So on this series of videos, you're going to see some very interesting information about the dig, about the bones that we found, and about the soft tissues that we're finding in them. Here now is a piece of Triceratops bone that has been decalcified, so all the bone minerals have been removed. You can see uh, how many of the blood vessels are here. This white area here, this is soft tissue on top of these blood vessels. So the bone is very stiff because it's fossilized, but yet there's soft tissue in here. This is about 40 power under the dissecting microscope. As I move this, you can see these soft tissues waving back and forth in the liquid. So this is impossible for these soft tissues to be here if these bones are that old. This would all be gone. But here you see the matrix of blood vessels that have all been permineralized. They're all hard rock. And yet these white areas show all of the soft tissue that is still present here after decalcification. So this is an indication that these bones are very young and not even 20,000 years old, probably much younger than that. So here we've redone the experiment with the little lighter fixative and we have a piece of biofilm pulled yet from another piece of Triceratops horn and look at how stretchy this is. This is almost like taffy. And so these biofilms where bacteria come and eat the Triceratops tissue leave these films and inside of here are pieces of Triceratops tissues that we're going to thin section and show you the actual cells of the Triceratops uh, bone tissue, the soft remaining tissue that's in these bones. And we'll do that next under high magnification microscopy. IDINO stands for the Investigation of Dinosaur Intact Natural Osteotissues. What does that mean? It means that we are looking in dinosaur bones that we've recovered from the famous Hell's Creek Formation in the Badlands of Montana for the evidence of soft tissues. This is important because recently it's been published in many major journals that soft tissues have been found in some long bones, some T-Rex leg bones, long bones, uh, from the Hell's Creek Formation. So the CRS decided to mount an expedition to see if we could find our own dinosaur bones and study them for soft tissues. This has major implications for the age of the earth and the formation of fossils. If these bones are actually 65 million years old, which is reported often by our evolutionary colleagues, they should have absolutely no soft tissues in them at all. Soft tissues break down very quickly, even under normal circumstances. And the fact that scientists have found soft tissues in dinosaur bone is staggering. So we mounted an expedition to locate our own bones, which we did, this 40 inch long Triceratops horn, and here you see pieces of it, which are being examined for soft tissues. 
It is important to publish this information in secular journals and present it to the general public because the general public is being misled respective to the age of these fossils. These bones cannot be more than 10 to 20,000 years old. They're loaded with soft tissues in them. In fact, our initial findings might suggest that soft tissue in dinosaur bone is the norm rather than the exception. So we're very excited to be investigating dinosaur intact natural osteotissues in these specimens collected from the Hell's Creek Formation in Montana. A scanning electron microscope allows us to examine the exterior surfaces of specimens at very high magnification and resolution. This is possible because we're using electrons instead of light. Here you see the gold-coated specimen uh, attached to a stub, which is now being attached to the specimen holder. Once it is attached to the specimen holder, we can place it inside the chamber. The chamber is a vacuum chamber, and it must be pumped down by vacuum pumps in order that all the ambient air, all the air molecules like CO2 and O2 and uh, all the other molecules can be evacuated or taken out of the chamber so that the electrons won't impact any molecules on their way to scanning the specimen. Now the microscope is ready for us to image this specimen at high magnification and high resolution. Now what you see is a captured digital photograph off the scanning electron microscope. And at this low magnification, 30 power, we're seeing very clearly all of the blood vessels from this porous horn that was from the triceratops head. Now this bone went through what's called a decalcification process. And so when we put it in the decalcification solution, it dissolves away all the bone minerals. So all these long dark areas in here, that's where the bone mineral has been completely dissolved away. And so what we're left with are these individual blood vessels that uh, bifurcate or split and split again and go through this horn like roots through soil. Here you see a long bone, a T-Rex femur that uh, Dr. Schweitzer collected in Montana. Parts of that femur were broken apart and put in a decalcification solution, and here you see the soft tissues that resulted from that. Some of these soft tissues had red coloring in them, and so it was suspected that it had blood products. And here you see the tissue with red blood cells inside the tissue which astounded the scientific community. She further showed pictures of separate blood vessels with red blood cells and other products inside of them. And now you see the osteocytes uh, that she recovered from the decalcification solution. These were individual osteocytes that were floating in her solution uh, and you can see them as distinct individual cells. Now bear in mind what Dr. Schweitzer found were individual osteocytes floating in solution in the decalcification solution after she completed her decalcification. Uh, what we found are sheets of tissue with osteocytes in them. This machine is a cryostat or a frozen section machine that allows us to freeze our tissues inside this chamber and once they're frozen we can thin section them to a very thin slice, about 10 microns in thickness. The silver specimen holder is at the center of the field of view here. I'm going to be placing specimens on it. These are specimens from the iDino project, thin films of tissue from the bones that we recovered. Once these are frozen, I can then thin section them to about 10 microns in thickness. And uh, 10 microns is about one-tenth the diameter of a human hair. So now we're going to take the specimen holder. Now you can see the specimens embedded in them frozen material. We're going to load it into the chuck. Now we have to align the chuck to the knife. And in order to do that, we have to create what's called a cutting window. Once the cutting window has been established, top and bottom, we can then advance the specimen to the knife. And now we can start making thin sections. And here you see me scraping off thin sections onto the uh, stage, I'm going to lift the stage away and with a slide I'm going to pick up those four sections right onto the slide and that's what we're going to use to examine under the microscope after we stain it and cover slip it. 
Well, what I'm trying to show here is the dinosaur tissue under moving video in the microscope. It's a little difficult because these are high resolution images and so the uh, videos um, are rather large in size and I can't take up too much room on the disk. But you can see uh, all of these osteocytes inside these sheets of tissue.